Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory. Today I would like to tell you about a complete category. So uh, the real numbers of categories, if you want. So um, limits are very important in calculus and in category theory. So uh, a field is complete if all limits exist, if you want. And the category is complete if all limits exist. That's kind of the main idea. And there will be a really, really nice theorem associated to complete categories, which at least I find a little bit surprising. I try to motivate the proof, but I still think it's a pretty surprising theorem, which we'll see at the very end. Okay, let's have a look. So um, so what is so good about the rational numbers? Well, they're easy and kind of they're nice to think about, but what is bad about them is that limits don't exist. So there are certain numbers, if you want to believe that there's a square root of two, it certainly does not exist in Q, it only exists in something like R. So the idea here is that square root of two is a limit. So a limit of a certain process here, for example, um, it could be a limit from below, it could be a limit from above, it could be some other type of limit, it could be a jumping limit, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's a limit and it doesn't exist in Q. And this kind of the justification why um, you would like to have something like the real numbers, right? The, the square root of two is not a rational number, but it's a limit of rational numbers. Kind of can see it here in this nice picture, which I of course stole, by the way. But anyway, um, but in in R, it is a real number and it's also a limit of real numbers. So R is complete, Q is not. And really the difference is uh, one of them has limits, all limits, and the other one uh, it doesn't just, it's just missing some limits. And kind of a whole justification in some way um, of what the real numbers are uh, or why they are important is because they are complete, because all limits exist in the real numbers. Um, and that's just not true for the rational numbers. This kind of the motivation to study real numbers if you want. And now we can have a look at categories. Uh, well, let's have a look at categories. Obviously, there's one category that everyone likes I hope at least, uh, vector spaces. So vector spaces has kernels, for example, and kernels are equalizers. It has co-kernels, so here's my kernel picture. Uh, it has co-kernels, and co-kernels are co-equalizers, which I haven't in my picture. It also has products, which are direct sums, and has co-products and so on. But anyway, um, the fact is in vector spaces, vector spaces is one of those nice categories, this real number type categories, uh, every diagram, absolutely every diagram has a limit. Remember, um, so the product was just the limit for the diagram with two vertices and the product just comes on top. And um, the kernel is the limit for, so it's the equalizer, so it's, it's the limit for, for this funny diagram here, which goes like this. And kind of the statement is that vector spaces is such a nice category that whatever kind of graph you draw, uh, whatever, whatever how crazy it is, I don't know, something like this, there will be an associated limit for that graph. So it is complete. It is like the real numbers um, in the sense of, well, complete fields or whatever, complete metric spaces as on the previous slide. And not every category is complete. Not every field is complete. The rational numbers were not complete, right? They were missing square root of two. Um, fields, for example, is an ill-behaved category. Fields is just, it's just such a bad category. It's so bad as a category, I, 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 whatever, whatever, poor fields. Um, so for example, products don't exist in fields. And kind of the problem is the mixing characteristic is kind of, it's not so easy to mix characteristic and product is very bad anyway. So um, kind of, if you have zero and one in the product, then it can't have an inverse because it's a zero. Ah, it's really an ill-behaved category. So ring is much better, but field, uh, field doesn't have, for example, products, and field is actually missing quite a few limits. So this is more like rational numbers. So fields are more like Q, and vector spaces are more like R. So vector spaces, every diagram has a limit, and in fields, well, there are some diagrams that have a limit, but certainly you are missing quite a few. For example, you miss products, and products are just very important. So um, it's kind of really, really not good to fields in this product. Fields sit in rings. So you can kind of think of this Q like sitting in R. So this is field uh, and this is rings. And it's kind of, kind of the same story. 
So if you kind of embed, as soon as your category is small and nice enough, you can kind of embed it into a complete category, but a given category itself need not to be complete. Uh, so let me just tell you what complete is. Of course, you can already guess this. A category is complete um, if it has all limits. Uh, you can add a word like finitely, uh, just meaning any finite graph has a limit, every, any finite diagram has a limit, but basically that's what it is. A category is complete if it has all limits. It's co-complete if it has all four limits. It's bi-complete. Well, you can guess what it is if it's complete and co-complete. Um, so for, an exa for example, vector spaces is so nice. It's a bi-complete category. It has limits. It has co-limits for any diagram you can draw. What a nice, what a nice statement. Um, the reason why you need finitely is, for example, if you like finite dimensional vector spaces, of course, you can't take infinite products in finite dimensional vector spaces. They would be, in general, fi infinite dimensional. Um, that's why you add this word finitely, and then it's finitely bicomplete. So any finite diagram in finite dimensional vector spaces has a limit, which is pretty cool. And field is just absolutely nothing, of course. Field is this really bad behaved category. This is nothing. Right? It's really the analogy between R and Q and R here, which I would like to sell. It's a very nice analogy. Uh, complete, this is this one. And not necessarily complete, this is this one. And the only difference here is, okay, we're in category theory, so there's also something called co-complete, and then there should be something called bi-complete, but otherwise you can kind of uh, ignore that. And kind of a fun theorem, which uses the Grenada embedding, um, at least for any reasonable, ignoring set theoretical issues uh, for any reasonable category. Uh, for, if you're interested in the set theoretical issues, they are linked in the description, but if you ignore them, then the Grenada embedding actually uh, embeds the category into a co-complete category uh, namely the category. So your data embedding was the category sits in the category of all functors from it to sets. There was some op involved that I'm ignoring here right now, whatever. And this category of functors is just one of those nicer ones in the sense that it is co-complete. Um, so the data embedding actually embeds every category into a complete category. So it's really like with um, whatever matrix spaces, every reasonable matrix space will sit in the complete matrix space. Q sits in R. Right? So we all know that. And um, kind of you have an, an associated statement in category theory, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so you could kind of think that every category is complete if you want, as soon as you, you can see it as a part of a bigger category. Right? So fields might be ill behaved, but there's a bigger category where fields lives in and which is complete. So kind of the limits then would exist. So the limits of fields are need not to be fields, but they're, for example, rings. Right? So it exists in rings. And now my main theorem about those categories, which I personally find super surprising if you see it for the first time. Um, so complete means that you have all limits. Co-complete means that you have all co-limits. That's quite a big statement. You can have all kind of funny diagrams, right? So for all diagrams you can draw, whatever it is. So two outgoing edges to this one, whatever. It has a limit. And equivalently, you can ask a wave way weaker question apparently, but it's equivalent, so it's not really weaker. Namely, a category is complete if and only if, and that's why I was trying to stress those so much, it has equalizers and products. That's the only thing we ever need to check, right? So in vector spaces, I already told you, it has equalizers, kernels, and products, direct subs. And if you believe the theorem, then this means immediately that that's what you need to check. It has all limits and all co-limits, which is kind of a cool statement. Of course, there's a dual statement. I'm not going into the dual statement anyway. But this is a cool statement, right? You only need ever need to check equalizers and products, and you have all limits in your category. Really nice statement. Kind of the idea of the proof is that the equalizer is the uh, diagram, uh, so the limit associated to the double-edged one, and the product is kind of the adding more, it's like this diagram, so adding more vertices to your diagram. In some sense, in some sense, you should be able to build all graphs out of those basic building blocks. And this is kind of how you um, how you um, prove the theorem by kind of building the, the limit out of the limits for the equalizer, so out of the equalizer and out of the product. Um, yeah. But this is what I would like to tell. What I'd like to tell you today. So really, complete is a nice idea, like the rational numbers versus the real numbers. A complete category, fields versus rings. If you want, fields is not complete. It's missing a lot of structure. But rings is complete, or vector spaces is complete. Um, it's like the real numbers versus the rational numbers. 
Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.